that much for that. What's happened? Must have caught the nick or something somewhere along the line. So as you've seen there, I just got busted off. Um, yeah, probably my bad, to be honest. Uh, that leader was actually on there from the last trip and maybe even the trip before that. So, um, yeah, not real clever. Um, to not have retired that one, uh, but it was a bit of a spur of the moment trip up here. Um, anyway, while I'm got gotcha, you, I'm gonna just uh, give you a look at what I'm using. Zerich High Braid. Look, it's a bit breezy out here, I'm not sure how well you can hear me, so how about we uh, head back to the shed again and uh, I'll give you a bit more of a rundown of uh, lines and leaders I'm using and also the rods um, that I'm using out here. Alright, so I'll see you back there. Oh, yeah. Right, here we are in the shed. To give you a bit of a look at my outfits, um, what I'm using, what I'm using them for, um, the lines, the leaders, and all those bits and pieces. Um, so we'll start off with the uh, the Wilson Blade and Tail Ultra Light Elite. Um, this is my grubbing stick. 95% uh, of the time in my boat, that'll have a uh, quarter ounce jig head with a black or a watermelon Berkeley gulp hanging off it, and that's its job. That's what it does, and it does it really well. Um, it's it's a fast tapered rod, um, plenty of grunt down the bottom, plenty of sensitivity up the top end um, to be able to feel the little bites or to feel that timber and stop you from setting hooks into the, into the timber. Um, it is a, 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 a split rear grip, um, single foot guides, um, so it's nice and light in the hand. I've got that one rigged up with a Stratic 2500 and a CI4. Um, I'm using a 10 pound um, Zerik High Braid on that one, great line that stuff, really come to like that one, um, and a 10 pound Oshio Leader from Shimano, um, excellent stuff, so that's that one, that's my grubbing stick, um, and it, it does it really well, so that's that one there, um, this one is the uh, the GT Custom Rod, um, this one is slightly longer, it's 7 foot 2, um, absolute all around, an absolute Awesome bit of gear, this one. Uh, it's rated to uh, for six to sixteen pound, um, but it'll cast anything from a from a five grammer right up to a twenty. Um, so I can have tiny little hard bodies that I uh, that I shake through trees all the way up to a twenty gram Trans Am um, that I'll be chucking at edges. Uh, but yeah, as far as working in trees as we're doing there there today, um, it's got a really good whip. It's a, a slightly slower um, action than the, the blade and tail rod, so it's got a, a really good whip, which you don't have to work hard to get the right action out of it. Um, when you when you shake those rods, you want that grub or that little hard body to be to be really bouncing away, um, and this rod just just does it to a tee. It's a it's like I say, it's a slightly uh, uh, slower action and um, slightly longer, and it just it just gives you that perfect twist. So. That's the GT custom rod. That's probably my, uh, my number two go-to as far as uh, fishing vertically. And I mean, it's my number one when I'm when I'm spinning on the edges for the yellows in the spring as well. So that one there has got the new Stratic um, 2500 on it. Um, they are sensational, um, these reels. All the good stuff of the absolute top end Shimano reels um, into a more bloody economical package. And yeah, awesome drags on them and nice and light and yeah really good again um, same setup 10 pound um, high braid with the uh, with a 10 pound um, Osea leader uh, next one there is a um, it's actually a Samaki probably about a 10 year old rod this one um, but I, yeah I'll, look I really like it again it's a it's a fairly fast action rod it's seven foot single foot guide so again light in the hand um, it just it just handles well. I like it. Um, it's 
sort of similar to the, uh, the blade and tail in, in the split grips there. It's got a slightly different shape though. It just, you know, feels a little bit different. It's nice and comfortable. Um, and I use that for, yeah, an in-between uh, rod where I might have a, a different colored jig head or I might have a di different colored tail. Um, I might have a different style of plastic. You know, you know, but all different bits and pieces. It's sort of like my experimental stick. I'll go out and I know what I'm gonna tie on the first two rods. That one there, it'll be sitting in the front of the boat there or at the back of the boat with something slightly different. I'll be marking up yellows, can't get them to quite commit to a hook. I'll chuck that one out and just vary a few different things on it and, and just see, you know, it's me stirring up stick, we'll call it. Um, last one I've got in the line up here is the just the Shimano Rack Raider. Um, this is a weapon of a stick. Um, heaps of grunt, two to five kilos this one. Just a single footer, nice and basic. Um, Rhenium Sire 4 and that one, the 2500 again. Um, this stick, I yeah, grub with it, I shake with it a little bit, um, but really it's sort of my uh, my stick that I'll have, say a TN60 or something like that on it, where I might mark some, some yellows that are hanging fairly high in the trees. You know, I'll be working a tree or I'll have someone or a mate or two working trees, especially in the comps. Um, they'll be working vertically on grubs and I'll get to the back of the boat and I'll just be flicking lures around just rolling them through or shaking them through trees and things like that. Um, again, uh, actually, no, this one's got uh, this one's got the power pro on this one. Um, again, in the 10 pound, and I'll use a, a 10 pound leader, sometimes a 12, um, you know, just because I am casting some pretty heavily timbered areas sometimes as well. Um, and also when it's real spindly, like uh, where I white angler, um, flowering when I'm when I'm working vertically, um, you know we've got some really good schools out of Wyangla Dam and the real spindly stuff, and to be able to just yank those fish out of there um, before they you know before they get a set on where they're heading to, you know that stick's really got some pulling power. So that's that one. So yeah, that's that's my four outfits um, that you'll find in my boat when I'm out there. Um, Fish in the vertical timber. Um, everyone's got its purpose. They don't always get a run each day, but uh, yeah, I like to have them out there so I can just roll between them and, and stir them up because you'd be surprised at how many times you'll you'll have fish, and especially with the live site stuff, you, you know you know they're there and you'll see them follow or chase something down. The amount of times you just throw something in and it's just the slightest bit of difference and it'll just, something just twigs with them and bang, they're into it, so. That's why, you know, I've got the four sticks. And really, that's that's not a whole lot. When you talk to some other guys, they might run bloody 10 rods in a boat. So, uh, but that's my four. It covers what I want to do without cluttering up your boat and having snap gear and all that sort of stuff. So, anyway, we'll head back out there now and, uh, yeah, get into a few more yellows. Got movement there. Chased me down, so. Still see him on the live there. Gonna roll this one and just see if they uh, if they're keen enough. Bugger. That's a tree. Top hands. There we go. He's out of the tree. Speaking of soft hands, that's pretty important with this stuff. I could have quite easily put a bit of weight into that then and would have just set the hook straight into the timber. But I felt it, knew it wasn't a fish, took the weight off, put me rod on a different angle, and just worked it off the timber. No need to be retying leaders or hooks or anything like that. Just straight back in again. Look at that. I'll just drop straight down to those fish. Give it a tap, lift it up. No response. I don't know, we'll just hang a bit. You can see one's moved right out of the tree there a bit. You'll circle back around and sometimes they're the ones you want to be chasing. The ones that are hanging a bit wider of the tree because they're more active, they're feeding, they're moving around. This 
one's coming out for a look. And we got him. Yeah. I don't think it gets any better than that. Oh, this one's got me in the trees too. All right, let's just see if we can work him out slowly. There's a kick, there's another kick. Fish is still attached. Patience, steady as we go. I can still feel timber. Try and feel which side he's on. I'm thinking he might be on the far side of it. And he's out. Bit of patience there again. Wow. Wow, wow. What's going on here? Back in the timber again. That is cheeky. I don't know, we'll just keep working him slowly. I can't really put a whole lot more pressure on. His head team will keep him coming. Pump him up, pump him up. Oh, yeah. That's why we're having trouble. That's why we're having trouble. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. How's that? Unreal. All right. Before I do anything, I'm going to vent this fish. So, hand goes on there. You feel him tense up if he's going to buck. And just slip that under the scale there. That's a little hypodermic needle. I think it's an 18 gauge. Very important. Very important step this. In there like that. And there we go. That's releasing the uh, air pressure out of the swim bladder. And he's going to feel a lot better. He's going to kick here in a second. All right. Now I do that before, as you can see, before I even get the hooks out, which can be a bit risky because there is a hook there you could get jagged on, especially with a stinger in there. Settle down, mate. But that is the best way to look after your fish. It really is a matter of seconds, not minutes, before the barotrauma kicks in. You can see here, it's a little bit of red here. That's a little bit of stress already coming through. But I know that I've released that uh, swim bladder, and um, he's going to be nice and healthy. We'll put him on a measure and um, yeah, see what he measures, and then we'll get him back in. I need a big fella. Gonna go 55, not bad for the jack. Yeah, bone jack beast. 55 on the map. Going back in. <laughs> 